thought to himself. With my jewel-like feathers I'm so unique, surely the most significant bird in the land, and don't the other creatures know it? He puffed and plumed, gracious in his own company, and then left his home for the birdhouse which would host the meeting of the birds. The birdhouse was a flurry of expectation and excitement that afternoon, with birds from all over the woods gathering to gossip and counsel each other. That day's meeting was to be the most important gathering of all. They were there to choose their king, a leader from amongst the birds who would represent them and their needs for that year. Who would it be? How would they vote? The anticipation grew. Three birds were standing for election. The crow, the cockatoo and the peacock. An early riser, the cockatoo was one of the first to arrive. A strategic planner, he confidently swept into the forum with his extensive white wingspan and striking yellow head feathers. The thoughtful and observant crow was next to make his entrance, casting an eerie shadow against the cobalt blue of the cloudless sky. The crow and the cockatoo each settled and began speaking to the birds, telling tales and giving advice about the forest rules, its regulations and keeping order. The hum of conversation buzzed around the birdhouse as the peacock arrived. Knowing he had to make an impression, he opened his tail feathers to their fullest and started to strut past the birds so each and every one of them noticed his grand entrance. Immediately, the crowd's attention shifted towards the distinctive-looking bird in their presence, their discussions about the forest forgotten. They noticed his slender sapphire neck, large emerald body, and the thousand beautiful eyes that shone from his tail feathers. They were transfixed, and the crow and the cockatoo both faded into the background. Peacock for king! A voice cried out. He looks like a king, he must be our chosen one, shouted another. Soon it seemed all the birds were calling out their agreement, and so it came that, and without a word from the peacock himself, the birds elected him their leader. A celebratory feast commenced, with the peacock on his throne as the other birds surrounded him, wishing him well and pledging their allegiance to him. As the food and drink was consumed, the smaller birds approached the peacock to bow and honour their new king. A lowly magpie bowed before him and asked, May it please your majesty, will you permit a humble admirer to propose a question? The peacock gazed at the little bird bowing in front of him and nodded, though he had little interest in the dull black and white bird before him. As our king, we put our lives and fortunes in your hands, the magpie said, gazing at the floor so as not to cause any offence. If, therefore, the eagle, the vulture, or any other birds of prey should attack our nests, please could you explain what measures you would take for our defence? Silence descended upon the birdhouse at this a most important question for all of the birds. All eyes flickered first to the tiny bird, still bent low in respect before the king, and then turned to the peacock, who suddenly seemed to have lost his confidence. He opened his beak to reply, then snapped it shut, uncertain of how to answer. The crowd saw his hesitation and the confusion on his face, 
and immediately remembered the logic and strategy of the cockatoo and crow. The king's beauty faded in their eyes, and they saw the peacock for who he truly was, an arrogant, shallow bird, ill-equipped to lead, defend and support their community. They realised he was a foolish choice and they begged the cockatoo and crow to take over and lead them that year. With shame, they realised that they had chosen poorly, blinded by dazzling feathers rather than true leadership, and knew that their voting in the next year's election would be very different.